of you are responsible together as a team for two things for the next six months. Two things. Number one is meeting your club goals. And those club goals are the Distinguished Club Program and Moments of Truth. Those are your club goals. You have those handouts, right? I don't need to go over them. You have a basic idea. If you don't know what the Distinguished Club Program is, talk to the rest of your team. They should know. The Distinguished Club Program and the Moments of Truth, that's number one. Number two is making sure that your club is meeting your members' needs. Because why are we here? Why does Toastmasters exist? Why do our clubs exist? For the members. That's right, the members. We are members too. All of us. Every single member in the club. That's why we're here. So your job as a group is to meet your members' needs and to achieve your club goals. So that's the next six months which we're, we're going to focus on. There's been a little bit of a change in the Toastmasters requirements for club goals. And it used to be that clubs had to have a minimum of six members, right? You knew that, they had to have six members. In order to be an active club, that's changing now. And now mem uh, clubs are required to have eight. Okay? So your club needs to have a minimum of eight members now, starting on April 1st, in order to be considered an active club. So if your club is struggling with membership, Make sure that your, uh, all your team knows that eight is your goal, not six. Okay? And for those who are, are doing the DCP, which is the majority of you, who are, know you're going to get the DCP points, remember that in order to even qualify for that DCP for the president's or the select distinguished or distinguished status, you have to have 20 members in your club or a growth of five for this year. So you can get all those points, and that's, I mean, it's great, but we want you to get, we want you to get that little ribbon, we want you to get the certificate saying that you actually got the distinguished um, rating, and if you can't do that if you don't have membership. So if your club is stretching for the 20, make sure you have 20, and if your club's on the lower end of the membership, if you're under 20, you have to have plus five. So let's say you start with 11 on July 1st, you had 11 members. How many do you have to have active members on June 30th? 16, right. Okay. Let's say you started the year with 17 members. How many do you have to have on June 30th? 20. 20. That's right, exactly. Okay. So as a team, work, work that out. Make sure that you don't... It's, there were a couple clubs last year that had like five, six, seven points and still didn't get distinguished because they didn't have membership. So really make sure that happens. You have five months to do that. Focus on the next six months. Focus and refocus on quality meetings. I know you're already doing that, but let's keep moving with that. Quality meetings. And that Moments of Truth sheet that you have has a lot of ideas for how to produce a quality meeting. And the last thing for all of the officers together as a team, start thinking about preparing your materials for the next officer after you. Your end of term will be June 30th, and hopefully the person who will be taking over your job will have some idea of what they're doing because you'll talk to them and you'll have passed on all your materials. It makes their job a lot easier, so really think about that. So what we're going to do is go through all the officer positions one by one, and I'm going to talk about what your specific position has left to do for the next six months. And if there's something that I missed or you have a question about, go ahead and raise your hand, okay? And if it's a quick answer, I'll answer it, but if it's a longer answer, we'll do a sidebar later. All right, Sergeant at Arms, how many people have you greeted? How many people have you greeted since for six months? A lot. A lot. Because that's what your job is, right? Your job is to be the first person that the people see when they walk in. When, when guests come in, the Sergeant at Arms is the very first person. If your Sergeant at Arms in your club isn't doing that, please remind them to do that. And if they are doing that, encourage them to continue. Now remember, Sergeant at Arms is not just greeting guests. Who else is Sergeant at Arms greeting? Members, too. It's everybody. Whether you shake hands or hugs or whatever it is you do in your club, elbow rubs, whatever you do in your club, make sure the sergeant at arms is the first one that does, that does it with everybody. Now, who greets guests? Is it just the sergeant at arms? No. Who else greets guests? All, All of the officers, exactly. Every single officer. Now, if you can manage every member to greet them, that'd be even better. But definitely every officer. Sergeant at arms, check to make sure you have enough materials to last you through the next six months and then some. So that when your new sergeant at arms come in, they don't have to order new materials right away. They can have a little bit of buffer. Treasurer! Who's a treasurer in here? Raise your hand. Oh, money people! Yay! How much money have you collected? <laughs> How much have you embezzled? I'm just kidding. Sure, that, was, that was a joke. Seriously. So your job, treasurer, for the next six months 
is to collect the dues on, and the due date is, anyone know when the due date is for the next round of dues? April 1st is the due date. Is that when you collect the dues? No. <laughs> when do you collect dues? <laughs> March, or even February, late February. When do you tell them dues are due? Mid-March, Mid so that you have some, yeah, you have some buffer. There are some incentives for getting all of your membership dues in by April 1st. So really work out with your club and your EC to find a way to get all those renewals done by April 1st, okay? Also, treasurers, you have a form you need to fill for the federal government, the 990N, okay? It's not complicated. It sounds complicated because it comes from the IRS, but it's not. It's pretty simple. They will, Toastmasters International will send you an email with all the information about where to go, what the form looks like, and everything. So you should be getting that. If you don't get that from Toastmasters, let me know, or Joe or Janet, one of us know, and we will help you find out that information. The other form, the 199N, is the California form, and that should be filed by Toastmasters. They should do it for us this year. That's what they did last year, so they should do it again this year, but they'll let you know too. They'll tell you that they've done it. Oh, Secretary, now's, now's the time. It's kind of mellow, chill time for the check Secretary, so now's a good time to double check. Do you have your club charter? Do you know where it is? Do you have your club constitution? Do you know where that is? Do you have all the EC minutes from the last few years and the last few months for sure where you know where it is? And do you have a record of all the votes and policy changes that have happened in the last six months that you have that easily to look up? Double check on the website that your officer list is, is correct and that all of your members have correct information on Toastmasters International website. So this is a good time to ask your club members to check if to see their address is correct, their email is correct, to ask them if they're getting the district emails. We send out emails pretty regularly, and if they're not, if they're not saying, hey, we get emails all the time, then their email's not working on Toastmasters. Okay, so that's a good time to kind of clean house right now. All right, next up, VPPR. Raise your hand. Woo! How many of you are having, have had open houses or are thinking about having open houses? Yay! Woo! Woo! Yay! Or other kind of external membership drives or PPR drives. Great. Good job. Keep working on those. This is a good time, VPPR, to review your website. Make sure it's all accurate, that all the information on your website is accurate. And make sure that all the club materials are branded. The VPPR is, responsibility, is responsible for the branding. If you look on your program, on the top, the bar is a branded bar, the little logo, the font is all branded. So just make sure that your material is branded. If your club is not all that interested in branding, baby steps. Little things here, little things there. Bring in the logo, bring in some colors. A little bit here, a little bit there, and eventually you'll get branded. I know it's hard to make a change. Also, VPPR, continue to work with your EC to bring in guests. <clears throat> Those of you who have done open houses or are doing them, great job. Membership drives continue. This mid-year time is a really good time to do membership drives because you still have plenty of time until the end of the year. You're not burned out or stressed yet. And you have a lot of energy. And you, in that way, if, you do, if it isn't too successful the first time, which I know it will be, but if it isn't too successful, you have still a little bit of time to find out, to figure out some other ideas. So this is a really good time to do a membership drive or any some sort of external marketing. VP of membership, raise your hand. You are VP of membership. Yeah, you yeah, represent. Awesome. How many people have you converted from guest to member? A lot. Enough, some. Oh, okay. You should be jumping up going, whoa, a lot. VP of membership, this is a good time for you to double check to see that you're, you're <clears throat> excuse me, communicating with your guests regularly. Have you sent an email out to your guests saying, hey, what's up? Have you, did you know that we're having a meeting next Tuesday? Talking to them and getting, kind of getting to know them and remind them that you're there. Also, VP of memberships, this is a good time to touch base with past members who have not renewed. People from five years ago or 10 years ago, hey, just what's up? We're still here, we'd love to have you back and visit, we'd love to see you. That's a VP of memberships responsibility to do that. And this is a good time for it because you are still in the middle of the year and there's a chance they might come back before the end of the year. VP membership, also work with your VPPRs on those membership drives and those uh, open houses. So that when they bring in the VPPRs, bring in those guests, you're right there to help them convert to members. Okay. Now, are you, is everybody clear on the difference between a VPPR and VPM? Yes. Who is not clear on that difference? Okay. It's, it's kind of difficult to understand. VPPR 
the public relations officer is the one, the vice president of public relations, is the face to the outside world. That is a person who goes out into the world, outside of your club, and brings people in. <laughs> External marketing. People who do not know Toastmasters exist, does not know your club exists, they go out in the world. VP of marketing is sitting in the club waiting for them to arrive, and once they do, they convert guests to members. So VPPR is external, VP of membership is internal, but you work as a team, okay? The handoff. Oh, also, just so you know, if, if for VP, VPPR and VP membership, if you have a membership drive of any kind, even an open house, you can have people help you from the club and they can get credit in their CL manual for helping with the membership drive. So that's one way to work towards the CL. All right, VP of Education. Anybody here VP at E? Woo! You guys have been lazy all year, huh? Not doing anything. <laughs> that's one of the most boring, the more boring jobs of the whole seven. Yeah, just kind of sit around. So now's a good time, VPE, for you to look at your schedule for the next six months and schedule it out and see if you can achieve those educational goals. Who's, who's done what this year? How far is everybody in their CC? How far is everyone in their advanced communication? Where are people in their CL manuals? And then kind of schedule it out and see if you can fit people in so that they can finish. And also at the same time, schedule it out so that you can make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. So a good time to assess the next six months. Now, if your club doesn't schedule six months out, you can do just kind of a rough draft and give yourself an idea of where you're at and then take it week by week from there. But at least you'll know so that when May, uh, May comes along, you're not surprised that you, where you're at. You know where you're going to be. Also, VPEs, club contests are going, are going to be starting soon. Actually, in just a week. February is the month for club contests. VP of E, you are responsible to make sure the contests, if your club does them, you're responsible to make sure they happen, but you're not responsible to chair them. In fact, one of the CL requirements is to chair a contest. So this is a great opportunity to help your members achieve their CL by having some people, any number of people, chair your contest. Contests are in February, and then area contests are in March. March. And then division contests, uh, yeah, April. And then the conference is in May, May 17th. So it goes club, area, division. District, thank you. May 17th at the Embassy Suites in London is the conference. <clears throat> so if you're going to do a club contest, now's the time to start figuring out when. And the area contests have already been scheduled. So you can go on the district website and look it up and see when your area contest is going to be. Division is also scheduled. Also, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are interested, I have some handouts about how to put a contest together that you're welcome to take. Okay. I have about 30 of them, so please feel free to take one. <coughs> if you don't do a contest in your club, that's okay. It's a fun thing to do, and I recommend it, even if you don't do a formal one, because it gives anyone you send to the area contest a chance to have practice before they go to, to the contest. But if you don't have a contest, that's OK. You can send a representative. And the two contests are table topics and international speech. So table topics is one to two minutes, as you know. And it's a question that they won't know until they get there. And then international speech contest is five to seven minutes. And it can be about anything you want at all. It can be funny or serious or whatever. Generally, those who win at international evoke some emotion, some kind of emotion, and have a message of some kind. But it's not required. That just tends to be what wins. So you can send somebody to represent. You don't have to have one. But I recommend you do. They're fun. And they give your, your people who've been around a while a chance to really compete, and those who are new a chance to do something a little different. Okay? All right, last up we have president. Who's president in here? Raise your hand. President. Woo! Yay! You guys are also a lazy bunch. <laughs> Gosh, I know, you guys are still doing things, blaze around and eat bonbons and have people wave fans over you, right? <laughs> so, President, thank you for leading your club. Great job. We all appreciate the presidents who do, who, have, who are willing to stand up and be the head of the club. Thank you very much. Presidents, your job for the next six months is to figure out who's going to be your nominations chair to help put the slate together for, next, for the next election. And that starts in a couple months. 
But start thinking about who you want to have as your nominations chair. Now, generally, the nominations chair is the immediate past president. It doesn't have to be, but it generally is. And the reason why is because the immediate past president has the best understanding of who's in the club, than any of, generally, than anybody else. Also, <clears throat> the president can't be on the nominations committee. The president is a de facto member of every committee in your club. Even if you're not officially put on it, you still are part of it as president, except for the nominations committee. That's the one the president can't be on, according to the Toastmasters International Constitution and Bylaws. Also, presidents, so you know, when you're putting together your slate for next year, of all the officer positions, presidents is the only one that can't be two, any, two years in a row. So, any other officer can have sex, uh, sex, uh, Successive, sequential, one run, one run after another. Um, you can do it year after year. You can be treasurer for 20 years in a row if you want to. But the president has to be different every single year, every different person. And in fact, now Toastmasters International, if you go in and try to change, try to keep it, the next year it won't let you. So you have to pick another person for your president this year. Okay? Now those of you who are in semi-annual, if you every six months you vote in a new officer, it, the term has to be a year. You can't do 12 months, more than 12 months in a row. Okay? So think about that when you're putting your committee together. And presidents also, if you haven't already been doing this, start scheduling executive committee meetings. We're getting towards the end of the year and now's the time you really want to work together as a team. If you've already been doing it, great. Keep going, keep focusing on that, good job. But there are some clubs I've been visiting and I'm talking to you who haven't done it yet. And it's particularly important because sometimes things happen in a club that are difficult to manage. And we're going to talk a little, a little bit about that in the presidents and VPEs breakout later. They're difficult to manage and it's even more difficult if your EC isn't united. If your EC hasn't talked to one another and you're not even doing basic functions together as a group, then when something hard comes along, it's difficult to work together. So have the EC mean meetings to learn how to work together as a group, so you're all moving forward as a team. And then when something something difficult comes along, then you can already you can tackle it. And what everyone's going to have the difficult challenge at the end of the year of wrapping up the DCP, wrapping up all your um, yearly functions that you have. So if you're working together as an EC, it becomes so much easier to do. So if you haven't been having EC meetings, start scheduling those at least a couple by the end of the year so your team's working together. DCP is a Distinguished Club Program. EC is Executive Committee, Executive Council. That's the board, your club's board. So all seven of your officers make up the Executive Council. CL is Competent Leader. So the first two, uh, the first two books you get when you, when you sign up for Toastmasters is the Competent Communicator Manual and the Competent Leader Manual, and those set you off on the two tracks, the leadership and the communication track. So CL is Competent Leader. And those are points? Those are uh, the books that you get. You, there's 10 projects in each book, and when you finish those 10 projects, you get you earn that award, the Competent Communicator Award or the Competent Leader Award. And if you look on the, DC, uh, the Distinguished Club Program sheet, you'll see that each time somebody in your club uh, earns one of those awards, it